there we go, that's me, like 17 years ago. I used to really be into graffiti art. And to cut a long story short, I was a fine arts student, like in high school, I was in a special program, and then I got really into graph. And graph really wasn't supported back then, but graph led me into really strange places. And so some of the places are in this book that I'm putting together currently. And these are all in Toronto, and they're in spaces that people usually don't visit. So some have artists, some are just spaces, but the first picture was me in Scarborough, and this is actually around the corner. This is also hidden. It's a garage in the junction, and there's seven artists on the wall. And what I really loved about graffiti when I started out was that it was free and it was always hidden. You kind of had to go out or you had to be friends with somebody. It wasn't sort of like on Flickr or on maps. Now you can have like a Google map that you pull up and it'll show you where everything is. This is also in the junction and it's actually the roof of a building, which you can't see. So I included this fellow who I came across completely by accident. I almost ran him over. <laughs> we drove in and he sort of ran away because he thought we were security. Um, I also scared somebody half to death here who's in the shadow and he was painting on the other side of the bridge. And there's uh, like the Humber River. And he was walking on the ice and painting and he saw me and ran away and then figured out who I was because everybody knows me because I used to write. So that's him. I made a model for me. This is actually right underneath the 401. And this is my favorite spot because it always gets redone and it doesn't have a lot of foot traffic, so the work doesn't end up being trashed. It's, it, it's all like this, you know, you'll have some that are sprawled out, but it's not like the alleyways here that everybody knows about or on Queen West. This is a building also just north of here, and it used to be filled with homeless people who lived in here, but now that all the urban explorers go in and people paint in there, now it's just sort of like a model, place to shoot models and stuff. It's not very interesting apart from the graph. This actually is an abandoned ground. Uh, it's in Concord and it, I think they grew roses in here, Concord Floral. And there wasn't a lot of graphs, so when I went around I took a friend from Belgium here and I found these pieces. I wasn't even expecting to see them, so they were kind of a nice surprise. This is also nearby. A lot of the graffiti in the city is around here. Um, it's on the line that runs north to, I think, Georgetown. And this is a local artist called Evoke. And he does more street art crossover work. This one isn't that interesting to me. <laughs> this is in Scarborough. And it's it's a wall that's completely hidden from the street, so you could drive by it. I used to drive by here all the time, and I never knew it was here until somebody tipped me off. So there's even places I don't know about after 16 years, and you really only see them on Flickr, and people aren't willing to share. This is also out in uh, the West End. No, it's actually in the East End. It's by, by Main Street. And it's an alleyway that actually faces, like I'm in somebody's backyard here. So nobody else gets to see this except the people who obviously live there and the other people who kind of come through this one-way alley. This, of course, I'm right underneath the uh, Bloor Viaduct Bridge, so if you ever take the subway, you can see a lot of work here. This kind of went up after Rob Ford decided to buff it over and over again, and then he just, his team gave up. So now there's a gigantic big piece there that says Hunch, which you can just kind of see. This is Black Creek, and that's my friend for uh, scale there. This also, when you drive by, you don't really see it unless you're right on the edge of the road. So I really like going down here and I make a lot of uh, field recordings that I've started to integrate with my work. Um, this is in the GTA, it's in Mississauga, and I have my friend in here again for scale so you can see how large it is. This is my favorite place. I don't really like to share this one online. It's sort of a secret with everybody that, that knows about it. But now um, the police have been catching people there, so more and more people have been going to paint. This is under Jane Street. So when you're driving down Jane and you just go north of St. Clair, you, you pass under this, and it's actually much larger than it looks. 
it's also always covered, but because of the foot traffic, the work tends to get ruined by people who don't like each other. So it's not like the other bridge earlier. This is also in Mississauga. Um, two rail lines pass through, and then on the other side you have factories. So almost, almost nothing exists around this. It's really quiet when you go here, and you need to walk like a half an hour if you take the bus, or it's the same thing if you drive, you have to walk in. This is under Bathurst. Uh, I didn't know about this until this year, and it wasn't really painted until the beginning of this winter. We had a mild winter, so everybody kind of painted right through it. And that's the Dawn, that's the West Dawn. So there's four tunnels, you'll see the next shot, it's very large. It's probably 10 meters high. So this is also sort of a secret spot that nobody knows about. Everybody kind of keeps quiet. And there's nobody really around there. Just don't go on the other side. I've been hassled by security there. They claim they own the river. <laughs> the private community center on the other side thinks they own it. This is near the Humber. This is... Uh, shot from about two winters ago and this bridge always gets painted over by the city I'm not exactly sure why but nothing remains so there's very few good good pieces sometimes they only paint halfway up this is my favorite spot which is the Lansdowne Bridge and this is where most of Toronto's graffiti history started so these are some of the images I have in the fine art book that I'm putting together later on this year and it's my favorite subject matter because it's what got me professionally into photography and it's obviously what I used to do myself. Thank you.